Good morning. We would like to welcome you this morning to the Westvale Seventh-day Adventist Church and to our special Parkview Sabbath. You'll notice we have a lot of younger people sitting in these front rows. They are going to be leading our worship this morning. So we ask you to be ready to listen, to support, and to praise God with us as we worship this morning. I do have a few announcements. Right after the church service today, 
We do have a meal in the fellowship hall, which is right outside these doors and to the right. Um, you are welcome to join us. We invite you to join us in fellowshipping together after the service today. Tomorrow, we have two big events coming up at Parkview. There will be a rummage sale. This supports home and school, our parent-teacher organization. It begins at 9 a.m. and runs till 3 tomorrow. Also, here at the church, we have a program specifically about how to help um, keep your child from getting lead poisoning or how to deal with lead. It will begin at 2 o'clock here at the church, so you can go to Parkview to the rummage sale and then come on over here at 2 o'clock for the lead abatement program. Also, and this is very important, Westvale members, you know that we are planning to move to a new facility soon. Next Sabbath, April 20, we will be having Sabbath school and church at our regular times, but at the new facility. It is at 4220 Fay Road. It's only a couple miles from here, but plan to be at our new Fay Road facility. We will have our regular Sabbath school and church programs there, and we also plan to have a baptism that morning. So plan to join us then. We thank you so much for being here again with us. And now if you'll bow your heads with me, we're going to invite God's presence as we begin our worship service. Father in heaven, thank you so much for the Sabbath day. We thank you for this gathering here this morning. And we ask that your Holy Spirit will open our hearts and minds to your message, to your presence, and that you will be honored and glorified by everything that's done here this morning. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our offering emphasizes today is for the Hope Channel, an Adventist satellite channel that beams the Adventist message around the world. If you would like to donate to the Hope Channel today, please mark that on the type envelope. All your loose offerings will go to support to our local church budget. A large part of that budget supports our school at Parkview. You are seeing some of the results of that today. As we read in Proverbs 11, verse 25, whoever brings blessings will be enriched, and the ones who water will himself be watered. You can bring a blessing today by giving generously to the Hope Channel, to Parkview Expansion, and to our local church budget. Will the students collecting the offering please stand? Father in heaven, we thank you for all the many blessings. We ask you to bless this offering and let it continue your work here and around the world. Amen.
All right, happy Sabbath, church. Today is a day to celebrate, amen? We are now going to celebrate and give the baptismal certificates to Ella, Reagan, Marley, and Mia, if you can come up front. This is for Mia. Your certificate is right in there. Marley, that's for you. Ella and Reagan. What does the church say? Yeah. All right, we're going we're gonna to do the picture here real quick. Let's step right here in front, ladies. Right here, right here. Right here. There we go. Here we go. All right. Thank you, ladies, sir. It is time for children's stories. As the children come in from, they will come around to collect an offering. This offering goes into a scholarship fund to help families who can't afford to pay full tuitions. At Parkview, af at Parkview after the children have collected the offerings, we ask that they go back to their seat with their parents today rather than staying up in front. Matthew 18, 15 says, If another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the offense. If the other person listens and confesses it, you have won that person back. True and faithful, just in serving, just in
I don't know, testing. Oh, there we go. Um, so in our classroom in Bible, we like to do something called soap journaling. And that's where we read a verse and then we write the so for, so for soap. So for S, that is where we write the scripture. And then for O, we observe what is it saying. And then the A, we apply it to our life. And then we write for P, we write a prayer. So it's just a way to kind of make... Um, a scripture more part of you and not just something you read and forgot. It's something that we try and remember. So the, um, our class is going to share um, a soap journal that we wrote. First we read the verse. Try to live in peace with all people and try to live lives free from sin. If anyone's life is not holy, he will never see the Lord. Hebrews 12, 14. Then we observe what it tells us. Be nice to people who are different. Trust in God and he will help you. Pray to God. Then we apply it to our life. I will try to get along with others. I will ask God to help me make good choices and be his child. And then we pray. Dear Jesus, please help me to have peace with others and to make good choices. I want to see you. Amen. Hi, I'm Esther. Hi, I'm Rebecca. Hello, Westville. Happy Sabbath. Today we will discuss Hebrews 12, verse 14. Work at a living in peace with everyone and work at living a holy life. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. This means God tells us to cooperate positively even if others are wrong. By living a holy life, you follow God like following the leader and listening to his commands. Unholy ones will not live in peace. They will follow worldly or sinful things and stay apart from the Lord. Having a relationship with God is having faith. When you have faith, you trust in something or someone. And with God, you accept him and trust him with all your heart, knowing that he will take care of you and for what's coming. For he knows your, the future and your life will be peaceful. When you don't have a relationship with God, you will have no peace and worry about a lot of worldly things. We will be talking about this is my father's world. It talks about how God made this world with peace and love and that we should cherish this world even with sin. We praise him and are grateful for the world he has given us to live in peace. The song is telling us God's creation is beautiful. God made this earth for us to have peace, faith in him, and no worries throughout our lives. He loves us and this earth and cherishes it. Hebrews 12, verse 15 says, Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. This verse warns us against harboring bitterness or a grudge against someone. This reminds us to look at Jesus and that we should forgive the person who hurt us. God wants us to be at peace with everyone. Being peaceful will help you and God's relationship. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Paul described God as the God of peace. The Christian message is called the gospel of peace, and peace is one of the fruit of the Spirit. Peace is the path we take to bring growth and prosperity to society. Without peace, it will, be, it will not be possible to achieve the trust you have in God. The song, This Is My Father World, talks about how this world belongs to God and that we should make peace with the world he created. When God created the world, it was peaceful, but when sin came, it ruined the world that God created. The first argument to ever happen was when Eve and Adam ate the fruit from the tree. They blamed everything else, including God, which is where the peace in the world was gone, and now the whole world has the absence of peace. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9 says, Peacemakers are blessed, which states that if you try your best and be a peacemaker, God will bless you.
Today, I will be finishing up our topic about peace with everyone. Therefore, peace is the way to get you and God closer, as it will help you trust and have faith in God. Always be a peacemaker, because like Esther said, you will be blessed. Also, like Rebecca, you need to follow the Lord and accept him into your heart. He loves you and created you for a reason. Peace as a right relationship with God or with Christ. Peace as a good relationship among people. God's opinion on peace, according to the Bible, is a right relationship with God in Christ. Psalms 121, verse 8 says, The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in in this and from this time forth and forevermore. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. He keeps guard when you leave and when you return. He guards you now, he guards you always. I believe this verse goes with this song because the song is called All Night, All Day. This verse says that God is with us always and forever. When we praise God, we are happy and peaceful, and everyone is singing. So we want to go out and talk to others about God, teach them about the things that God has created and done for us and everyone else. We should go to others and tell people, create peace and happiness. So when Jesus comes back, more people go to heaven with us. God says he is always with you. What do you think that means? Well, I believe God is not limited to time and space. He exists everywhere at the same time. No matter where you go or how fast you get there, God is already there. His presence is a reminder of his love for you. No matter where you go, you are always in his presence. The verse in Philippians 4 verse 7 says that the peace of God surpasses all understanding is very real and it's something that each of us can experience. It's something that God wants us to experience and it's one of our birthrights as God's children, but we can only obtain it when we are in his presence. John 14 verse 27. The peace offered by the world is an empty promise and can only bring temporary comfort. God's peace is a permanent peace offered by only one who can be trusted to keep his word and heal our sin. This explains that we should only trust God with peace because he is true peace. No one else and nothing else. The peace of God can be described as a tranquil state of appreciation and faith. When we submit to and trust the commandments of God in Christ, it requires a mixture of humility and courage to experience God's peace, seeking beyond the mere abilities of our own understanding. Hearing and believing God's word is important for salvation, which means having our sins forgiven, our relationship with God restored, and a promise of eternal life with Jesus. God wants everyone to hear the word and be saved and we have a part in spreading that word. Numbers 6, verse 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. This verse explains that when we are walking in God's light, he looks and watches us through everything and shines towards us. This song is telling us that God is always with us and that he loves us. He is the way that we should follow. I know that we should follow God because sharing the gospel message with others provides them with the opportunity to experience the forgiveness and love of God through Jesus Christ. This decision has eternal consequences as they will be saved and they will spend eternity with God. This is a responsibility that we should take seriously.
Good morning. So we have a special presentation we want to make this morning. There's someone in our audience that we want to celebrate. Our pastor's wife, Jessie, who's also our teaching assistant in our kindergarten and first grade class, has a birthday this month on April 21st. So we want to call her up here. We're so blessed to have had her step in this year. We love having you at Parkview. Um, you're just an amazing addition to the classroom. I know Mrs. Sargent appreciates you so much, and um, we're just blessed to have you on our staff. And we want to celebrate with you and say happy birthday, happy early birthday. So we're going to sing together this morning. Please bow your heads for prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you that we can have a nice day and that we can bless you and that um and that um everybody can be here and that the Holy Spirit can protect us and that when when everybody's going home, please let them go home safely. And that um is Mrs. Esposito's birthday and that um we can have a beautiful day. And then may we pray, amen.
Testing. If you are in the center aisle, if we could come down with the tables to set up for potluck. If you're in the center aisle, can you guys move over, please? 